Let's start right now with uh, um, the head of crypto at Cloudflare, Nick Sullivan. He's on the line uh, joining us. Hi, Nick. Welcome. Hi, Leo and Ian. Hey, Thanks Nick. for having me on. Have you had any sleep in the last week? <laughs> uh, I, I've had a bit of sleep, but uh, yeah, this has been keeping me up quite a bit. All hands on deck. Cloudflare is a, a CDN, a content distribution network used by a lot of people. Uh, it's a really great service. Uh, it does a lot of things, including mitigate DDoS attacks. We're a customer um, ourselves at the register. Yeah. A lot of people are. And on Saturday, as I mentioned, Tavis Ormandy of Google revealed, well, he discovered and then later revealed that there was a bug that was causing the release of some customer data. So first of all, in a nutshell, it, it wasn't your bug, was it? It was in a library you guys used? Pulsar, I believe. Yeah, so actually this was Friday afternoon. Uh, we were having an all-hands meeting and uh, noticed a tweet from Tavis Ormandy. Oh, uh, God, that's Google's just what you want on a Friday afternoon. So he did go public. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, wow. He, he said, someone from Cloudflare, please contact us uh, immediately. Uh, does Tavis so, not have your <laughs> phone number? <laughs> uh, yeah, he does, but... Um, uh, that that was the way that he reached out. It, okay. it, in any case, uh, we got <clears throat> we got a whole team together and took a look at what was happening, found the root cause, and it's uh, one line of code, as I understand it. Instead, and this is a it's such a common bonehead programmer error in a range check. He used equals instead of equals or greater than. Yeah, that's right. So um, we have a lot of features that parse HTML. Uh, so one of the things that Cloudflare does is protect customers from scrapers, uh, for example, for stealing email addresses. We have a feature that replaces email addresses with uh, images that contain that email address. So uh, oh, we have a cool. piece of code that goes through your HTML, parses it, looks for specific things. And uh, we've had an old component doing that, uh, a library that we've been using for about five years. And we were in the process of replacing that with a, a new, faster rewrite. And that's where the bug actually happened. So there was a latent bug, uh, a, what you say, a classic overread bug uh, in the old parser that was triggered by us transitioning to ah. the new parser. So it didn't show up until you transitioned. When did you make that transition to the new parser? Yeah, we, we've been transitioning a lot of our services that do HTML rewrites from the old parser to the new parser. Uh, the first service that we trans that we started using the the new parser with was uh, back in September. Uh, so that's potentially only, potentially when this bug started to uh, spit out information. Yeah, so so back in in September of, of 2016, uh, we we launched a feature called automatic HTTP, HTTPS rewrites mm -hmm. and this is to help people who have mixed content issues uh, automatically fix those mixed mixed content issues and uh, a small number of sites had that enabled and uh, if their web page had a specific type of malformed HTML, uh, it, it triggered this bug. So, a couple of things. Uh, it's it's first of all, it's fixed now, right? That's right. Yeah, we we've turned off the offending features within uh, less than an hour. It was fixed almost after. immediately. Yeah, it's forty-seven minutes. Yeah. My understanding okay. was that you actually shut down yeah. the first system from the from the tweet to us turning things off, and uh, we managed in in the the next couple of days to track down the, the, the bug itself and, and actually re-enable all those features. Was there uh, any and, evidence that this had been exploited? No, from what we've seen, nobody really noticed that this was happening. Uh, in, in fact, uh, <laughs> the bug that was uh, available in September was only leaking for very, very, very small number of pages. Uh, what actually triggered this and triggered Google finding it was that uh, we had turned on another feature. Uh, we transitioned a new feature to this new parser on February 13th. And uh, this is this is two weeks ago. And that was enabled for a much broader swath of Cloudflare's customers. And, and that's when uh, some of the results that had uh, embedded content were showing up in Google's cache. And that's how, that's how they found it. And this was the email obfuscation feature, which, 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 start, which sort of triggered this all off on the 13th. That's right. So email obfuscation is on for a lot of customers, and uh, although not all of them have malformed HTML in their websites, uh, several of them did, and uh, Google, as, as well as other web search engines that crawl the internet, who managed to hit those websites at that time, uh, at, managed to get a little bit of leaked information into the, into the websites that, that they cached. And what information was leaked? Was this just a RAM leak? Where did this information come from, and what, what did it contain? Yeah, this was a a RAM leak, as you will. It was embedded 
memory of our reverse proxy service. Uh, and the type of things that we've seen in this uh, memory include some internal Cloudflare headers. So we add different headers to your request as it go th goes through, as well as uh, sort of random requests for uh, other customers of Cloudflare. So uh, if your site had enabled email obfuscation, uh, someone hitting your site may see a, a little bit of chunk of data that's usually a bunch of random garbage X, uh, bits, but may contain, say, uh, headers or cookies from requests to other sites that use Cloudflare. So that's why it's likened to Heartbleed. It was a similar kind of the, well, result. I mean, they said Tavis or somebody at Google saw some of this leakage and went, whoa, that is not something that should be seen publicly. Um, and that's that's really a big red flag. But it was random data. You, it wasn't you know it could be leaking all sorts of different stuff. Sometimes mm. you, sometimes secret, sometimes not. Right. That's right. Uh, the most common thing we saw were um, some inter as I mentioned some internal pieces of of things that were in memory. And and as you said, this is this is a memory leak inside the the software. So right. it's stack memory. Right. And mm -hmm. that can contain a lot of different things. In the case of, of uh, ones that we've seen in caches that we can track down, some of them are just complete requests for other assets for other Cloudflare services, including the, message, the request body and the request headers. So the question everybody's asking is which sites are affected? What are the preconditions? For what services of yours does a site have to have been using to be affected by this? Well, one of, the, one of the more interesting things about this bug is that you didn't have to actually use email obfuscation or any oh. of these uh, fil filters to be affected, but... Um, so potentially any, it's anybody using Cloudflare? Anybody using Cloudflare could have requests for their service being embedded in the sites that use Cloudflare that have the vulnerable services enabled. I, I, mean, I, mean, I gotta parse this one. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not just every Cloudflare customer. They would also have to be what? Well, they've got to have the malformed URL. They have to have them. a malformed, malformed URL, and they have to be, OK. Yeah, they've got malformed script. They've got to be, it's got to be. Um, In other words, it's not, is it, is it, it's potentially anybody, but it's really a subset of that, a fairly small subset of that, that could have been bit. Is that right? So the, yeah, if there's a there's a fairly small subset of cloud of requests to Cloudflare assets that would trigger this dump of information, but the information in the dump could be from anyone visiting visiting any Cloudflare site. Ah, and ah, um, okay. Yeah, that, that's any the key user point. or any website. Any user of any website that uses Cloudflare. Mm. So this is really a big problem because it means, okay. Uh, I get it. And, and this explains to me why you haven't released a list of affected sites, because it's not that simple. That's right. So we, what we did was uh, we looked through Google's cache and all sorts of different places where people had crawled uh, these affected sites and gotten these chunks of data. And uh, we looked through that all that information, and we only found uh, messages from a few different Cloudflare customers. And uh, some of them included authentication tokens. We've contacted and those customers directly and, and let them know. But we, we never found anything to do with, say, passwords or um, social security numbers or credit cards or, or anything like that. It, it was usually just uh, an authenticated request to, to one of the services. Doesn't mean it couldn't be. That's right. Or it couldn't have happened because it's just a, it's a random bunch of stack. And no one, you, it could be anything in that stack, right? That That's stack right. frame. Uh, yeah. And it's also right. mixed in with an, also, an, an awful lot of gubbins as well. So it, it's not gubbins. easily scraped. It could have lots of gubbins in it. <laughs> Tons of gubbins, yeah. I mean, we, Look, we, we so invented I'm, I'm not right thrilled right. that Tavis Ormandy, <laughs> I'm not thrilled that Tavis uh, announced this in a public tweet instead of contacting you directly. I think it might have been more prudent. It sounds like, though, that that doesn't much matter. Tavis. And the Google team did work hard that weekend and for the rest of the week clearing caches. Yeah, we were very happy that they let us know about the issue. Yeah, as soon thank as goodness. You did everything you could do 
So, I mean, this is a, a good example of Cloudflare and a, a company responding appropriately, well, right? Well, Tavis was very complimentary uh, about about the response that he got and the speed of the response. Yeah. He even put in one of the engineers was just like, great, this is just what we want, an email from you from you on a Friday evening. But, yeah. you know, I mean, it does seem like this has been cleared up quickly. You, you know, I was really impressed that James came on Hacker News almost, almost as soon as he James, uh, your CTO. Oh, John um, Graham Cummings. John sorry, Graham John, Cummings. John, sorry. John, we've had John on before. We, I love John. He's one of the great guys. We asked for John, but I think he's exhausted because it's also middle of the night in England. Uh, I take it you're in Calgary. No, uh, I'm in San Francisco, but... <laughs> you're just a uh, fan of the yeah, Stampede. Have, All right, have, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you're on our time zone. Yeah. I'm, I'm really thrilled we could, we could have you. But, uh, and, and it sounds like everything that was, was done was done appropriately, and it was one of those weird bugs that you know, got triggered in a very unusual confluence of, of mm. events. It was a bad bug. Uh, do we know who wrote that code and can we spank them? <laughs> uh, well, we we fixed the code. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, and we're in, in the midst of replacing it with, yeah. with a more modern stack yeah. and, and uh, one that's much more well tested. These, these things uh, happen, but this is a pretty bad leak of information. What going forward should end users, people watching this show, what do they need to know? about mitigating whatever risk they have? Well, as I said, we don't really know exactly what the risk is, but uh, doing the math, there was about a five-day period in which uh, around 120,000 requests were leaking data. So um, there is a, a, a very small possibility that uh, considering how many billions of users use Cloudflare sites every day, there's a, there's a very small percentage chance that uh, a regular sort of everyday user uh, has had their information compromised. And, and as I said, when we searched through Google's caches, we didn't find any passwords at all, let alone your passwords for every site that you, you use that uses Cloudflare. Right, right. So I would, uh, I would advise some caution. I'm not going to say that it's impossible that your password uh, may have been compromised at one point, but uh, it, it's unlikely given given the statistics of, of the situation. There's something like 0.00003% of requests to that's Cloudflare. Right. So that's why this is difficult, because you can't just say, well, everybody should change uh, their passwords uh, for uh, Authy, because Authy's a customer, because it's not that clear. No. Um, so it's hard to make a recommendation at this point. In fact, even the sites that might be affected can't really wouldn't necessarily say, hey, reset your passwords, because they don't know. If you were using two-factor authentication, would that be uh, useful? Even if your password was leaked, that would help, right? Yeah, and this is something that, that I say all the time. I'm a, a big advocate of two-factor authentication. So um, even if a request you made that had your password in it to a service was leaked, uh, someone would not be able to take over that account if you have two-factor authentication enabled, because yeah. Um, your second factor will have rotated and, right. and sort of changes every 10 seconds. Right. Yeah, right. and you should, you, ideally you should have two-factor on absolutely everything you've got right. because it's the only way to be even remotely secure. Not everything, unfortunately, allows two factors. Don't so. get me started on that yeah. one. Right. Um, and, and I, you know, it doesn't hurt to update your passwords. And if you use a password manager like LastPass or 1Password, they have automated facilities that can go out and Yeah, and 1Password was straight out there saying, yeah, if, if you're using us, you're, you're, you're safe. We're not affected by this Right. At all. So if you're using 1Password, then you've... You're and they have a watchtower uh, application that will let you know if there's an issue and help you change passwords. But it doesn't sound like... Let me, let me ask... Let me give you this opportunity, Nick. It, in, the, in the coverage, and there's been a lot of it, I think some of it may be uh, unnecessarily um, uh, sensational, not yours, <laughs> but others. Gosh, the is there, is there anything you want to correct or... or uh, here's an opportunity for you to talk to people directly. Is there anything that you at Cloudflare would like to correct about the report, reporting that's been done so far? Well, uh, rather than say correcting the media, I, I would go out there and say uh, myself and John Graham Cumming personally are not going to be changing our passwords. Okay. Uh, we don't consider that this is a very high percentage chance of, of being compromised. And um, in terms of everyone should panic, Maybe they shouldn't. Uh, everything that happened in this bug was uh, laid out sort of transparently on Cloudflare's blog. If people have uh, interest in, in finding exactly what, how this happened and what sort of data is, is leaked, 
Uh, John Graham coming did a great job writing up so. uh, mm. a full complete yeah. blog post about yeah. this and postmortem. So I would say <laughs> and this was a very bad bug and the, the potential risk was very high, but I think the, in practical terms, uh, the, the risk is, is pretty low. It was about as good as you can be in a situation like this. And the mm. response from Cloudflare, I think, uh, was was exemplary. I mean, you guys uh, addressed it immediately, fixed it within 47 minutes. The timeline was fascinating, actually. Publishing that in the instant report was a good yeah. move because it did give you a sense of the urgency that was in there. I gather with one of the programs, because it was slightly older, you didn't have a kill switch in there, but you still managed to patch it within about three hours. Yes, that's right. So there were three features that were affected. Uh, the one you're mentioning is called server-side excludes. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a protecting your site from scrapers. Uh, sort, sort of bug, but we, we figured out how to disable it um, pretty quickly. Good. Oh, nice job. <sighs> okay, so don't panic. <laughs> Keep calm, carry on. Uh, uh, everything worked as it should. Uh, bugs do happen. They're always going to happen. It's impossible to write complex code that doesn't yeah. have a bug in this it. This was a nasty just, one, but mm. it was uh, fortunately discovered, uh, sounds like, quickly and uh, mitigated as quickly as possible. And you aren't changing your passwords, Nick. <laughs> Although right. so, somebody said that's like the LifeLock guy giving out his social security number. It doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but but I but you know I know I don't know you Nick, but I know John very well, and I absolutely trust John. And uh, I think you guys, it sounds like you've done the right thing. So uh, thank thank you for coming on and kind of uh, letting us know exactly what happened. Um, I guess if we continue to follow the Cloudflare blog, any updates will will go there. Yep, that's right. Any anything that has to do with this that we come up with in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll put on the Cloudflare blog. So that's okay. blog.cloudflare.com. Got it. And a great Twitter handle, by the way. <laughs> What's his Twitter handle? <laughs> it's it's going to flash up there, yeah. Oh, yeah, mine's uh, at, at Gritty Grease. So, yeah, please follow me. <laughs> I, I always update. Anything you want to world. tell us about that handle? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it's it's more of a, a metaphor for computer security. Yes, uh, sort of <laughs> grease commerce, but you know, but with grit, with a little grit in there. Yeah, Nick Sullivan, it's great to have you, head of crypto at the Cloudflare. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Cheers, Mike. Right. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, you satisfied? I mean, what do you yeah, think? I mean. <sighs> When we first read Tavis's report, because that came out slightly before the end, about 10 minutes before the instant report, and we're going through it, okay, right, yeah, this is potentially very serious. Ooh, that's potentially really serious. And then it kind of rolled back. We were a bit concerned based on, because initially Tavis was saying, this is, they're dealing with this very well. And then as he got into his, into the into the forum he was posting, it was kind of like, yeah. hang on a second, they're flanneling a bit, they're right. trying to underplay this. I think in some sections of the press overplayed this. I think the worry was that they were going to Cloudflare were going to underplay this, and then I re think they realised quite how big a storm of, of interest this was yeah. going on, and they dealt with it in a in a re in as good a way as you could expect anyone. To. I, I went through something some of the same uh, thing. We were talking about this. Lisa and I were talking about this when it broke, and I first said, uh, "No, this is don't worry about it. This isn't a big deal." And then uh, overnight, I noticed I was reading a lot on uh, Reddit and uh, on Cloudflare's blog and. Mm. on the register and I started to get more and more concerned about it and now I feel a little bit uh, better. Yeah. Nevertheless, I did use LastPass's automated uh, password change uh, faculty. Mm. Um, uh, it's useful. Um, oh no, it's very handy and one and of the reasons you want to use a good security manager. tactic as well. Yeah. But yeah. the one really annoying thing about this is we've now been deluged by calls from their competitors going, "Ha ha! You see, we told you that." That's really, really unfortunate. I noticed a couple of CDNs were actually saying, "See, you can't trust them. You yeah, should use us." Exactly. That's not good. And no. you know what? It's also Schadenfreude, and it's also bad karma because it could happen to you. The problem is, exactly, this could happen to anybody. This is how computers are. They was, are not perfect. It was a single check, and that was the whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, for the want of an ale, the kingdom was lost, yeah. but they put it back together again. So, yeah. you know, it worked out. But you look at it, I looked at the bug, and it's like, well, you learned that in, like, Computing 101. Yeah, I know, but come on. How often? <laughs> we've all. It's we a typo. Made, you know, it's basically a typo. I right? learned not to you know, put a hammer to my thumb when doing carpentry at school, yeah. but I still, still do it do occasionally. It. Occasionally, <laughs> you hit your thumb.